Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction for you guys. Today, guys, of course, we're checking out the newest episode of Marvel's What If. This is Season 1, Episode 6. What if Killmonger rescued Tony Stark? I'll be honest with you guys. I'm going to be honest. I have no real expectations or have any idea of what this episode is about. The first five episodes, reading the titles and then seeing the trailers and thinking back on what they showed, I had some sort of idea of where they may go. And most of the time I was wrong, and that's fine. With this, Killmonger rescuing Tony Stark, I have no clue what to expect here. And that may be the best part about it, is I really don't know what to expect here. Because Killmonger was introduced so far into the MCU in terms of the timeline. Here, he's introduced within Iron Man 1. That's a big, huge, major shift in the timeline of the MCU. With these other, you know, what if episodes before episode six here, we had an idea where in the timeline and there wasn't like, and, and I don't think there was like any major shift in like when a character gets introduced like that. I don't think, I mean, Thanos in introduced in what would have been Guardians one within the T'Challa becoming Star-Lord episode. But, you know, he was, in, I think he was, he was actually shown, he was shown at the end of Avengers, but then he was shown within Guardians one, but he had more of a prominent role in the what if episode, but this is a major thing. I'm trying to think. Maybe I'm missing something from the, one of the what ifs, but I have no expectation. That may be the best part about it because I don't know what the hell's going to happen here. I know that he saves Tony, Killmonger does, but where does it go from there? I have no earthly clue, and that may be the best part. So I don't know. So I'm going to come into this episode and just see what it's all about because I really have no clue and I have really no predictions because <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen here. And that's really cool because what I like about the marketing for what if they show, they show some really cool stuff. They do, but they're hiding a lot of stuff clearly because, I mean, these episodes have had some big reveals and some big moments that no one saw coming. Or if, if someone did, they must have heard leaks or some shit or whatever. But a lot of us have been surprised who've been watching the show in terms of reveals and stuff because they've been really good in the marketing of hiding stuff. So let's get into now. Check it out and see what the episode's all about. What if... Killmonger Rescue Tony Stark, Episode 6. Let's go. Is it cool if I take a picture with you? Yes, very cool. Yes, very cool. No, throw it up, I'm kidding. Yeah, peace, I love peace. Getting right to it, no wasting time. Wow, right away. Heroes are not born. Mm. They're forged in darkness. I love this. Oh boy. I think we're done here. I brought receipts. Wire transfers, bank documents, phone records, Google. Oh, shit. I just dropped it all online. The ten rings. Oh shit. All in all, I'd say he's done pretty good for a kid from Oakland. I mean, what's your concern, Pepper? I mean, other than the killing part. Well people come around, everyone wants something. Yep, and what does Killmonger want? What? I like anime. Worst case scenario, we'll end up with the world's most expensive Gundam model. Jarvis, start casing the kind of model. Oh boy, this is not good. This is wow. If we could miniaturize an arc reactor, so basically they're taking what would have been Iron Man and now creating these drones instead. Yeah. Ulysses Claw? No, Tony. Absolutely. Okay. Claw. Where are we going? Clean up the world without getting your hands dirty. Oh, that is good. That's a good line. On a pillow. I think he's the one doing this, yeah. I love it how fast he is. Oh, I love it. Damn. He just killed him. Man, that's insane. Word of the wise, never play Clue with Jarvis. Oh, shit. Go ahead, call the cops. You were right, vibranium worked like a charm. Mmm. Oh shit. What do you say? To killers? 
Tony. Tony. Oh. Doesn't matter. Shield. Seven. Like you said, Wakandans are full of surprises. Yeah. God damn it, he's killing everybody. You let them inside our force shields. The electromagnetic interference will block their satellite uplink. You're suggesting we let the killer robots into the city. What is his plan exactly? Nice. Whoa. That was cool. Open the shields. You're an idiot. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not liking this at all. Your Lord, we said the hope in Wakanda. Hold on a little bit more than that. Exactly. Ooh. Damn. That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> mm. Mm. I am a loyal servant of Wakanda, Your Majesty. Let me be of service. No. With this herb, you shall become the next Black Panther. My God, I maybe his whole goal was to become Black Panther too. Oh. My cousin, your for human suffering is more suffering. The cure is mm. power, and now I. Damn. Because you stole it, power. What? Uh oh. Wait. I'm here to help Miss Potts. Oh. Mr. Stark was a genius, but he's not the only genius. Mm. Yes, we have a common enemy. Yes. Unfortunately. <laughs> when I said I had no idea what was going to happen here, I had no expectations, just going to go in and see what happens, I did not expect that. That to happen. <laughs> wow. A version of Iron Man 1 and Black Panther, kinda. And a little bit of Age of Ultron with Ulysses Claw on that ship. A little bit like that... Just a lot of stuff. Okay. I like the fact that it was a version of Killmonger getting back into Wakanda, but a very, very different approach. He knew beforehand Tony was going to get assassinated. He's like, I can use this to my advantage, actually. So he saves him. And then his plan starts to come into fruition. He gets hired on by Tony. And then he even takes Obadiah's job when he reveals to all these this press and everything that Obadiah was the one that orchestrated this whole thing. And what I liked so much is that they made another major shift too. Tony not being captured, he never becomes Iron Man. So he never had that protection in case Killmonger does turn on him, which of course was going to happen at some point. I mean, once they started showing what else he was doing beforehand, yeah. So Tony never becomes, uh, Tony never becomes Iron Man. And what I liked about The Watcher is that it feel like throughout the whole episode, The Watcher was like getting more, like he seemed like he was sad towards the end of it. Like his face, he was frowning. He was not happy at all with this timeline and what he was watching. He was, it was, it was crazy. So the turning point that I was quite shocked by was that we had Rhodey sent to go look at this vibranium that was needed for these AI robots, these these soldiers essentially, these this, these robots are going to be replacing soldiers. This plan that, of course, Killmonger had, and he's like, oh, you know, we'll see. And then he, of course, brings it up at the perfect time, and of course, Tony's like, I'll build it. You saved my life. I'm going to help you out. Oh boy. And then seeing Black Panther, and once again, Chadwick Boseman voicing him. It was so amazing to hear him voice the character again. Um, I I I don't know if he's going to pop up anymore. I think he is. I think there was a shot in a what if where you see um, T'Challa 
as a Star Lord, that version of the character is so, and from something we haven't seen yet. So I'm assuming he'll be back again. But it was great to hear him as Black Panther. Shocked as hell after all this amazing fights, but Black Panther's destroying all these guys. It's so quick and fast. It's amazing. And literally in one fell swoop, Killmonger shows his true, true colors. We, I was suspecting, of course, he's going to turn, but who knows? It might be a completely different approach. And he, like, I don't know. But then again, I know they went down the darker path of Killmonger. He kills his cousin. He kills Black Panther like nothing, kills T'Challa. And then he kills Rhodey. And then he makes it look like Rhodey killed T'Challa. And then started the whole war between the two about the United States and Wakanda. And, of course, Tony is like, don't mess with Jarvis, because Jarvis saw the whole thing and showed a, basically, uh, basically showed what happened, and he knew. And Tony used one of the um, AI robots against uh, Killmonger. It didn't work. He kills Tony. Brutal. Kills Tony. <sighs> and see, I was expecting something else to happen than what actually did. And I'm kind of glad I, I, I was wrong because I was suspecting with all those robots coming that when he said, okay, lower the shields, they'll come through and then put, then, then have the shields reactivated and they'll shut down the robots. I'm like, okay, it's not going to happen. It actually did work. And then he hits a button. And then of course, no one saw him hit the button, <laughs> but then the robots start attacking. I thought for when that happened and it was leading up, I'm like, I think the robots are going to be working and he's going to take over Wakanda. He's going to rule Wakanda. Maybe at some point he would have in the storyline if we would have had a longer episode, but he actually helps fight the things he created in order to show that he is trustworthy and he becomes the new Black Panther. And I like the fact that T'Challa, when he was waking up, seeing the past Black Panthers and stuff, that T'Challa confronted him. Was it worth it? And your idea of um, stopping chaos, or, or I think it was like stopping chaos, causing more chaos and more agony, something, like, something along the lines of that you, you think that you, adding more to it is going to stop it or prevent it. It's like, that's not the case at all. It's like, that's a good point. You know, Killmonger had a mission. And in this version of the story, he had a lot more hurdles to go through, but he still managed to do it. I like that the fact that it actually ended on a better note with Shuri actually talking to Pepper and saying, look, I know what happened. I know he killed Tony. I know he killed my cousin. He did all this stuff. We have to open their eyes. And I'm like, that is a good ending. Like, it's it's obviously a good ending to a very dark and, like, twisted sh episode show. It's a, well, it is a twisted show in a sense. It's really crazy, but it really is a twisted episode because... Just some of the things they were doing, I'm like, my God, like, this is brutal. This is brutal stuff. And I'm glad this is a what if, <laughs> not the actual thing. Oh, man. Um, I like that Pepper was always kind of questioning Killmonger, which actually makes sense. I think she would question him, right? Like, she would she would question exactly who he is and what is his motives because she made a point. Everybody wants something, something along the lines of that line, but it, it, implying that there's there's nobody out there that is just out there doing stuff just just because they're always in it for something. There's always something they want. And in this case, Killmonger wanted to build an army and do all these tricks and make people believe a certain thing and he basically just he won. He won isn't he won in his own way. It was crazy. But I, I was expecting it to go even further. Like I was waiting for more like, you know, killings and stuff while he's in Wakanda, but he didn't do that. He got what he wanted. I guess he wanted to become Black Panther. I mean, that's kind of what happened in the case of Black Panther is that he becomes a new version of Black Panther. So, but in this instance, he goes about it in a very completely different way and he succeeds. He succeeds in it. And, and I like the fact too, it's like they were introducing characters way sooner than they actually do because Shuri is way younger than she is in the actual timeline of the MCU when we first get introduced to her, because Black Panther dies way before he's supposed to. Or supposed to. What, what am I saying? <laughs> what am I saying? Black Panther's even introduced. He dies before he's introduced. I, I, it has been a morning, guys. It has been a crazy, crazy morning. Sorry. <laughs> don't know what I'm... My mind just went completely blank there. I don't even know what I'm saying. I don't know. Who am I? Who? Who is this? What, what am I doing this for? 
But way before he's ever introduced, he, he's killed. And Rhodey's killed too. And Rhodey isn't dead. He's still alive. Insane. So anyways, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a ramble and flub again. <laughs> what did you guys think of this episode? I was quite surprised and I cannot wait to see what happens next because the show, man, the show continues to get crazier and crazier and surprises me and uh, I love it. That's why I love it so much. So hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. I'm curious to know what you thought about the episode. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.